we're asked to find the wavelength of green light with a frequency of 5.5 times 10 to the 14th Hertz which is 550 terahertz or 550 trillion cycles per second and then we're asked to find the wavelength in nanometers so let's start by just looking at a waveform here we have a sine wave represents the light and because this goes on and on and on there's 550 times 10 to the 14th of these I'm going to stop right here okay and we're going to show that like this now this distance by the way we're showing we'd like to show five 550 trillion cycles but I don't have enough space to do that here but if this is what this represents this goes on and on and on then it also means that this occurs over a period of one second because this is 5.5 times 10 to the 14 cycles per second but also since this is light this also represents 3 times 10 to the 8th meters so this represents this ties in all these units real nicely this represents 3 times 10 to the 8th meters this distance between here and here and we had 5.5 or 550 trillion cycles occur during that time and that all occurred over a period of one second. In one second this beam of light traveled almost to the moon and we're taking the distance that it traveled in that one second which had 5.5 times 10 to the 14 cycles occur during that distance and so the wavelength is going to be simply if we look at the wavelength being from here to here and that being lambda then the wavelength or the width of one cycle is simply going to be this distance 300 million meters divided by 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14 cycles and that will give us the width of one cycle so we we're just trying to set this up to kind of show you what we're asked to do here and what this physically means and because this distance even though this distance is really great we had so many cycles occur here that we expect the wavelength to be a very small number because a large number divided by a much larger number is going to give us a small number so we kind of expect that we kind of expect a small number here and we know that the wavelength of light is relatively small and it's in the nanometer range in fact the wavelength for visible light falls in the range of about 800 nanometers and 400 nanometers so it can be as short as about 400 nanometers and as long as about 800 nanometers. The first case, the f um, 800 nanometers, is uh, the wavelength of red light, and uh, 400 nanometers is about the wavelength of ultraviolet light. So at least we know what uh, what to expect for our answer. Now we have a formula. If you're a formula person and you like uh, memorizing formulas, then I recommend that you use this formula here or memorize this formula C equals 
lambda times frequency, which is actually the speed of light, in this case, is the wavelength times the frequency. So anytime you multiply the wavelength and frequency of some waveform, then you'll get the speed of that waveform. It's always a constant. Here we're using C, which is the speed of light. But this could represent, we can use this same formula to find the speed of sound. If we took the wavelength of a sound wave and multiplied it by the frequency of a sound wave, it will give us the speed of sound. And to some degree, you can even use this to find the speed of a ocean wave. If you knew the wavelength of the ocean wave and you knew the frequency, you could find the speed. Unfortunately, with ocean waves, it varies quite a bit. It depends on things like the, uh, the depth below the ocean wave. Um, but the idea is very similar. Now, this is a formula that you could memorize. And I recommend you only memorize one formula, but this will give you th three formulas. You can get three out of this. You get the one you've memorized, and you should be able to derive two more. So the other formula that's going to help us with this problem is lambda equals the speed of light divided by the frequency. And all we did was we divided both sides by the frequency, and that gave us this formula. All right, but let's look at another way to look at this problem and solve it. We're given that our frequency is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. We're told it's 5.5 uh, times 10 to the 14th hertz, which is actually cycles per second. We want to find units of wavelength, which is meters per cycle. This is what we're looking for. This is what our units need to be, ultimately. Now, since we have cycles on the bottom of this fraction here, for our for the units we're looking for we can take this and set this up so that we have cycles on the bottom so that it'll make our problem a little easier to solve so let's go ahead and do that we can rewrite this as 1 second over 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14th cycles and this is, all we've done is we've taken the reciprocal of this fraction right here, just so we could get cycles on the bottom. Now, we haven't really modified anything here. All we're saying is that one second is equivalent to 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14 cycles, which it is. So this fraction is essentially equal to 1, because one second is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14 cycles, and 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14 cycles is one second. But by setting this the way we did, by turning this upside down, what we've done is we've got cycles on the bottom now. So we're going to multiply this by something that's going to allow us to get meters and get rid of the seconds. So we can set this up so that we know that we need seconds to cancel out on this thing that we're multiplying by. We want seconds to be gone because there's no seconds in this fraction here. But there is meters, so we know that the units of the thing we're multiplying by has to be in meters per second. But meters per second is velocity or speed. Velocity and speed aren't the same thing. One's a vector quantity and one's not, but in this particular case, we'll look at them as being equivalent. So this is speed, and specifically, it's the speed of light. 
So this is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second that we're multiplying by. Now the nice thing about this is we can cancel out our seconds and we end up with meters per cycle which is what we want. Now really this is the same method as using this formula because if you look at this formula wavelength is C over F C is the speed of light well there's the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and we're dividing by frequency well if we invert frequency and multiply it's the same as dividing by frequency so we've essentially done that here we it, we essentially divided by frequency by turning frequency upside down but in the process we made this problem a little easier to solve without really having to memorize a formula we're just doing unit conversions here so once we get to this point we can take and simplify this or make it look a little nicer by saying this is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters over 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 14th cycles and now we just gotta do some math so if we bring up a calculator here I'm using the Windows calculator we take 3 exponent 8 for 3 times 10 to the 8th and we're dividing that by 5.5 .5 exponent 14 and that gives us 5.45 times 10 to the minus 7th and that's meters per cycle okay we're asked to find the wavelength in nanometers now how do we do that well if we look at this answer right here we notice that our exponent over here is 10 to the minus 7th for nanometers we need to be 10 to the minus 9th. So we know that ultimately we're going to have some number times 10 to the minus 9th. meters per cycle. Now what did we do to get 10 to the minus 9th? Well we decremented the exponent by 2 to get the minus 9 which means we really reduced this whole multiplier here by a hundred so that means we have to increment this part of the number by a hundred in order to compensate for what we did to this side of the number so if we do that we end up with 545 times 10 to the minus ninth meters per cycle which is the same as 545 nanometers which is our answer okay now we mentioned before that this answer should fall in the range of 4 to 800 nanometers and it does green light is about in the middle of the spectrum so this is the right answer and this is what we wanted to find so hopefully this helped and you learned a different way of doing this a way of thinking about the problem a little bit using some uh, unit conversions to find the right answer.